The overall topic today is the Biden administration in turmoil. I don't think the Biden administration is in turmoil, but I do think because of changes in the country that the Biden administration is in great danger of significant losses, not only because of historical precedent uh, that the outer party uh, tends to win in off-year elections in 2022, um, but also because I think the president has not performed as he ran, exactly what Will said, as a moderate. He seems to have moved, or at least the press is describing him as moving very far to the left, and he certainly appears to be extremely influenced by the Progressive Era Coalition. It is interesting that if the 2024 elections were to be held today, and of course if they aren't, and they're many several years away, that virtually all of the new polls show that it would be a very even contest, that Donald Trump could win fair and square, and uh, it, it is quite interesting overall. And if you look at the president's ratings in the two new polls that came out this morning, he had a 40% approval rating in the Monmouth poll and a 41% approval rating in the in, in New Wall Street Journal poll, both of which came out this morning. And what was most interesting, and this is something that Will alluded to in the Wall Street Journal poll this morning, Hispanics, who are usually overwhelmingly Democratic, were split in terms of their 2022 preference between Democrats and Republicans. Um, but of course, the presidential election is not today. It's more than two years away, and we do not know whether Joe Biden and Donald Trump um, will even run. I think Joe Biden has time to recover from his current difficulties, but as anyone who studies public opinion knows, it is much harder to raise one's standing in public opinion than to see it fall. Both Biden and Trump are more negatively than positively regarded. Um, my topic today is the evolution of, or the swirl of the Republican Party. And as I'm sure most of you know, the Republican Party is one of the oldest parties in the country. Like the Democratic Party, which was founded uh, slightly earlier, the GOP has changed in many ways since its founding in 1854. In his latest book on the history of the two political parties, my AEI colleague Michael Barone has noted that both parties have adapted, and here I'm quoting him, sometimes swifty, swiftly, sometimes haltingly, to shifting opinions, to emerging issues, to economic changes and cultural currents, and to demographic changes as well. At the same time, he says, each of has maintained a constant character. And I'm going to talk about the GOP's constant character today. To see how the GOP is involved, it is important to look at what Republicans believe. The Pew Research Center recently released a political typology that allows us to look at what unites and divides different groups within the Republican and the Democratic parties. It's a very useful categorization, and it mirrors an excellent typology that came out immediately after the 2016 election. It's hard to do a political typology. We learned from this study that Republicans are both ideologically and demographically diverse. One could say divided, but I would say diverse. Republicans break down into four major categories today. Pew calls 23% of Republicans faith and flag conservatives. This group is the party's foundation, or the base today. These people are strongly religious, strongly patriotic, and believers in American exceptionalism. Equal in size is what Pew calls the populist right at 23%, an identical number. They have less formal education, and they are most downscale in terms of their economic status. Although Americans are becoming more educated with each election, there are still more people in the United States without a college degree than those with a degree. In 2020, 41% of voters had a college degree, while 59% did not. The populist right Republicans are very skeptical of immigration. They are highly critical of the nation's economic system. They want to tax the rich more. And in that sense, they are very similar to many Democrats. And they are very skeptical, also like many Democrats today, of big companies, particularly big tech. These two groups are much more enthusiastic about Trump personally and his main issues than the other two smaller groups. A more familiar group to all of you in the GOP is what Pew calls committed conservatives, 15% of Republicans. These people are pro-business, have higher levels of education, and are very active in politics today. They're slightly more liberal on social issues than other GOP groups, but they solidly voted for Trump, but they're much more skeptical of him now. 
Pew labels a final group of Republicans as the ambivalent right. These people are younger and much more racially diverse. The Republican Party is becoming much more racially diverse. They are 18% of Republicans today. These people want Trump to stay out of politics. These four groups are somewhat united on core issues, what Barone calls the constant character. They believe that government's doing too much, that government is regulating too much, and that taxes are too high. They believe that there's been a lot of progress in the past 50 years on racial and ethnic issues in the United States. They believe that Americans are losing faith in the ideas that made the country great. As election expert Henry Olson, who spoke to you last year, has written, two of these groups, the faith and freedom Republicans and the populist right, are not well represented among the elites in the Republican Party today, and that is already causing problems for the party in Washington and throughout the country. Several pollsters, and this gets to your question, ask Republicans whether they are more a supporter of the Republican Party or more of a supporter of Donald Trump. NBC News has asked the question two dozen times since 2017. The latest question had half of Republicans saying they were more a supporter of the Republican Party and 40% saying that they were more supporters of Donald Trump. But the trend is inconclusive. It's bouncing around quite a bit. And the responses that Republicans make are moving back and forth on that question. Many Republicans, 75% in the latest Economist YouGov poll that came out this morning, say that Joe Biden did not legitimately win the election. Interestingly, 41% of self-identified independents give this response. This question is basically a question about supporting Donald Trump. I don't think it's a question about election legitimacy. In our 2021 political contest, as Will has suggested, opposition to Biden's policies united these groups with different political perspectives, and Republicans won impressive victories in the Virginia governor's race and came close in heavily Democratic New Jersey. Biden won Virginia by 10 points in 2020. He won New Jersey by 15 points in 2020. So these were very big losses for the party. Historically, as I said, the odds do not favor the Democrats in the 2022 elections. The party in power almost always loses seats. And given how close the margins are in the Senate and the House, this could spell trouble for the Democrats. Whether the groups that elected the new Republican governor of Virginia can remain united in 2024 is a very big question and one that we can't answer today. I don't know if Donald Trump will run. I think there is some evidence that he's fading, but that may be premature, it may be my own view. He is exerting considerable influence in the selection of candidates for the 2022 contest. He has staked his reputation on electing the vast majority of them but if it is only a mediocre performance, he will lose considerable luster. It is not clear to me whether some of the candidates he is endorsing can win. He's endorsing them in primary contests. I'm not sure they can win in general election contests, particularly in crucial Senate races where the Republicans don't have a very good margin. It is also possible that the stolen election storyline may become less compelling with the passage of time. Further, Trump doesn't have the microphone that he once had either. While his endorsements will be important to those 2022 candidates, a Trump endorsement hasn't necessarily been a guarantee of victory in the handful of special elections that we've had since 2020. In Virginia, the Republican victor kept his distance from Donald Trump, and I think that the new GOP governor there has provided a model for other GOP candidates. Additionally, Trump is fighting numerous legal battles that will occupy his attention. Finally, like Biden, Trump is old. While Trump seems more vigorous than Joe Biden, voters will still start thinking about his age in 2024. Many polls suggest that a good number of Americans today, including some Democrats, think Biden is too old. Still, no other Republican at this point has stood up to challenge Trump in 2024, although there is a great deal going on behind the scenes. So can the Republican coalition hold together in 2024, and will it have a clear identity going forward? The party is evolving into a more working-class populist party like other parties around the world. Um, 
whether the Republicans can satisfy that sentiment in some cases, whether they can tame it, remains to be seen. Thank you so much, Colleen. May I follow up? Uh, because you, you have uh, mentioned this uh, wonderful survey by Pew Center. Mm -hmm. uh, and because you are writing on a weekly basis on the American society, not just on the political spectrum and the uh, classical fights among the politicians, but trying to see and to forecast what will, who will be the, the voters in, in 22 and in 24, and how much they will progress or evolve from the situation right now. According to you, the Republican Party is able to win this midterm election, or is it just a possibility? Or in the midterms, I think Republicans are very well positioned to do very well in the midterm elections. I think that they, if history is a, is a guide, they will retake the House of Representatives. And already you see so many significant democratic retirements, people who have been in politics for a very long, long time. And these become open seats that are much more competitive uh, and therefore could tilt to the Republicans. The Senate is more complicated. And I think some of the candidates that Trump is endorsing in the primaries are very unlikely to win general elections, but still the odds favor in 2022, the odds favor the Republicans retaking the Senate. In the same time, we are seeing, uh, I mean, on a constant basis, uh, year after year, presidential cycle after every presidential cycle, that the confidence and the, the sentiment of the American people towards the Congress is still very, very, very low because yes. Congress cannot deliver mm -hmm. with a majority or without a majority. How do you think that this uh, specific will impact the 24, the 22 election? Opinions about Congress have been very low for a long time. Congress has myriad responsibilities and Americans find a lot to criticize. And so the very low rating for Congress will not help incumbents um, in either party, but most incumbent Democrats and Republicans try to insulate themselves from the broader currents. They talk about what's important to their districts. And so in that sense, incumbents always have an advantage. But still, with so many open seats, with history as a guide, Republicans should do very well next year. 